Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about Johnson counter. Johnson counter and previously we have discussed ring counter, these two comes under, these two come under uh, synchronous counters. That means all the flip flops, how many number of uh, bits we are using, all the flip flops will be having a common clock pulse, so that they will be synchronous each other. Okay, so Johnson counter a category of a category of synchronous counters synchronous counter so synchronous counter asynchronous counter already discussed the differences between them synchronous counter has a common clock for all the flip flops asynchronous counter means the output of first flip flop is acting as clock input for the succeeding stages Okay, that process will be repeated for n number of flip flops. So now a ring counter is the output of the last flip flop is connected at the input of the first flip flop. And here also the same but here we will take the complemented form of the output. The output of each flip flop is connected to the input of next flip flop input of next flip flop the output of very very important points when we are going to design a uh, johnson counter output of last flip flop output of last flip flop is connected to the input of first flip flop okay the output of last flip flop nothing but here it is a complemented form complemented output the complemented output of every flip flop is having two outputs one is true form and other one is complemented form so in the johnson counter we are taking the complement of the last output is connected at the input of the first flip flop but whereas in the ring counter we consider only two forms okay we don't go for the complemented form then the output of last flip flop is connected as the input of the first flip flop that is just normally a true form for the ring counter but whereas in the johnson counter we should consider a complemented form i think but suppose if you are having a flip flop like this this is the input and this is q this is q bar this is the output we are taking and connected the first input of the flip flop now consider consider 4 bit johnson counter consider 4 bit johnson counter so 4 bit johnson counter needs needs 4 flip flops 4 bit johnson counter needs 4 flip flops so those 4 flip flops are like this So first one D and another thing is all are D flip flops only here also like a ring counter and this is output Q, this is Q bar, okay Q, Q bar. So this output, this output Q, this is Q, this is Q, this output is connected here, this output is connected here, again here but the complemented form of the last flip flop is connected as the input of the first flip flop and another thing in order to say that all the flip flops are synchronous each other we are giving a clock pulse which is common that means all the flip flops are changing their states parallelly at a time this is the clock pulse okay raising edge okay that means whenever a raising edge of the clock event occurs raising edge means like this raising edge of the clock occurs automatically every flip flop will be activated 
will get activated and the input will be transferred to the output again here the input will be transferred to the output so the process will be repeated for any number of times we are applying the clock pulse okay now see this is first flip flop second third fourth now let us see as we know counter means it counts the number of clock pulses ring counter is used to count is used to count n number of clock pulses so suppose if you are having four bit ring counter that counter counts four bits uh, four clock pulses four bit uh, ring counter counts four clock pulses similarly n bit ring counter counts n number of clock pulses but we, here we have taken four bit johnson counter how many clock pulses can be counted by this johnson counter okay that we will see okay so first one is sequence table sequence table so sequence table means these are the output table q1 q2 q3 q4 let us start with the initial value initially all the flip flops are cleared cleared clearing is nothing but making the output to zero making the output to zero that's why all the outputs of the flip flops are zeros now applying clock pulse applying clock pulse first apply first clock pulse so whenever raising edge applying clock pulse whenever raising edge occurs all the flip flops energized and and the input will be shifted that means q4 see q4 equal to 0 see here q4 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 q4 is equal to 0 but what about q4 bar it is 1 so this one will be giving as the input for the first flip flop so what happens this one will come here this 0 previously it is 0 here q1 so this 0 will come here this 0 will come here and this 0 will come here okay that's why so this 0 will go here this 0 will go here this 0 will go here and q4 is 0 but q4 bar is 1 that is going as the input for the first flip flop so it is now 1 okay this is after application of first clock pulse now for the second clock pulse second clock pulse same this 0 will come here this 0 will come here this 1 will come here and again the q4 is 0 q4 bar is 1 so that one will be at the input when the third clock pulse is applied 0 this one will come here 1 1 as q4 is 0 again it is 1 when fourth clock pulse is applied this also 1 so all are 1s now tell me what happens when fifth clock pulse is applied as all are 1 q4 is 1 q4 bar is 0 so that 0 again applied at the input so first becomes 0 and remaining 3 becomes 1 and when sixth clock pulse is given like this and coming to the seventh clock pulse triple zero one when eighth clock pulse is applied what happens again all are zeros all are zeros so all are zeros means again it is initial state initial state where we have started initial stage where we have <coughs> sorry initial stage where we have started so how many number of clock pulses that this johnson counter counts means we have to count up to 7 from the beginning of 0 so how many 0 to 7 means so this counter counts 0 to 7 clock pulses 0 to 7 clock pulses so 0 to 7 means total how many total 8 how can you write for 4 bit Johnson counter 4 bit Johnson counter counts counts how many 8 nothing but for n bit we can write 8 as 2 into 4 2 times the number of bits that means 
therefore n bit johnson counter n bit johnson counter counts counts to n number of to n number of clock pulses to n number of clock pulses okay this is what the number of clock pulses being counted by the johnson counter uh, very very important ring counter counts n number of clock pulses but whereas the ring uh, johnson counter counts to n number of clock pulses just because by changing the last bit to instead of taking q now johnson counter takes q bar okay the state diagram state diagram so state diagram is let us consider 0001 this is the first state and goes to 00 00 1000 Four ones again zero one 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 zero zero one one and then zero 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 one. So this is the state diagram which uh, continuously state uh, continuously changes their states like this. Okay. In the next video, I will explain about the VHDL code for the Johnson counter.